In this video, we're going to be setting up GitHub Actions to auto build um, our ECS library and deploy it to creates.io um, whenever we push to the branch. Um, now, GitHub Actions is a really, really simple and, you know, free, at least for open source projects, um, way to like basically set up a CI CD system for ourselves. Uh, now there's plenty of alternatives that we could use, you know, such as CodeShip, CircleCI, Travis CI, um, and all of them are great. I've used plenty of them in the past, but now that we have GitHub Actions, I'm storing my code in GitHub, might as well run the actions here as well. It's super easy to use, and I'm gonna show you how we can do it with Rust without too much work. So if we head over into, um, into our repository here, there's this actions tab. So if we just go into this, it actually is suggesting a workflow for us to set up right away. Let's go ahead and, and you know, get that running. So it's gonna create a, a folder .github, and then inside of that, another folder workflows, and then finally inside of that, a file. So it's gonna name this rust.yaml, that, that's fine. It could be whatever we sort of like feel like it. And then here, here we have all of the, um, well, the simple workflow that's gonna set up for us. Now, if you want to learn what each of these commands are doing, um, you can go to a workflow syntax uh, for GitHub Actions. It's a really, really simple um, Google search for this, just like GitHub Actions uh, reference, um, and that will bring you to this file. Uh, let's walk through it really quickly and sort of like see what this basic GitHub Actions is doing for us. Uh, to begin with, its name is going to be Rust. That's going to be what is displayed on the left uh, when we run all of our actions. We'll see that later once we actually get this going. Um, I'm actually going to name this to Build and Deploy. Uh, this is a YAML file, which is sort of one of those sort of JSON alternative file formats. Uh, behind the scenes, it kind of is creating JSON. Uh, if you're not familiar with YAML, there's a lot of documentation on like how to build it. It's also very easy to create a JSON version and then auto convert that over to YAML if that's something you'd prefer to do. Uh, YAML is like Python, white space sensitive. So if we're using uh, spaces like here for the indentation, then it's important to stay consistent with that. Otherwise it will break. Uh, all right, so then on. This is when, when is this action going to happen? So on a push to the main branch. Now we notice also we have this like pull request. So this action would run on a pull request to the main branch as well. Well, if I'm deploying to creates.io, I don't want to deploy on a pull request. That would sort of make it so that anybody could deploy something uh, even if I didn't really want them to. So I'm gonna just remove this part and we're only going to deploy on a push. Uh, next up is environment variables. So we can set up some environment variables here. So in this case, we're setting up cargo term color and sending that to be always. Now, um, there are plenty of times we would use environment variables for secret stuff. Do not put those here in this place. This file is going to be public. Um, even if you have a private repository, I would highly recommend uh, putting all of the, well, all of your tokens, all of everything else that should be secret and not publicly accessible into some other place. We'll get into that in a little bit uh, for how we can actually access those secrets without exposing them here in this file. And then we're into the job section. So this is actually gonna be the steps that run when the action runs. So here we're gonna have this build. Um, I'm just gonna name this deploy here. Uh, and okay, so runs on. We can choose the operating system that this is gonna run on. Our choices are Mac, Windows, and, um, and Linux here. Uh, there's actually many more choices than that. Um, and I'll let you go and explore and choose whichever ones uh, you would prefer. I often have used uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux um, 
for building targets for those architectures and then deploying just like the binaries that are generated from them. It's a really easy way to like make sure that you have the latest uh, binaries up to date and available on something like S3. And then we have our steps. Uh, so the first thing that's going to happen here is it's going to check out our code. Now notice that this uses a uses statement. That's because it's a action that is created from somebody else that we can find from the marketplace. So if we want to find these potential marketplace items for us to get, uh, come oh, click on marketplace up here and then click on actions at, oh, and then you can search for something like checkout. And here it is. Here's checkout. And then here is all of the documentation that you need for how, you know, using it to its, uh, to its max potential. The basic checkout is going to be good enough for us right now. Then I noticed that it's going to try to build it, uh, which is fine. Um, although I don't necessarily want to run the build right away. And I don't necessarily want a verbose. I'm going to just do a release mode. So it builds for release. And then um, we have cargo run test, cargo test. Let me find also don't need the release. Uh, sorry, the um, the verbose for that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that actually did a double cut in front of the build. So we're going to run our test first and then and then we're going to run a build for this. So we're going to start with this and we're going to make sure that this works at, as we expect. So I'm going to go ahead and start to commit and this is setting up uh to setting up a uh, rust deploy github action we're going to commit and if we come back over into actions we can actually see here's that build and deploy if we had other files we'd see those here as well and i click on this um now all workflows also we're going to just see this workflow running here too we can click into it Here's the deploy um, uh, run that's happening, and we can actually see everything uh, that's happening here. We'll actually see the code output of the tests as they run. It's very similar to something like Circle CI, where you can watch the output. Um, in this case, it's going to be fairly fast because this is a you know pretty small crate, and there's not too much for it to uh, to do. So obviously it's going to download all of the, uh, the requirements for us. And then, well, we got a failure here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. Uh, we can actually see, oh, we got this uh, assertion failed. Left doesn't equal to right. Well, let's go ahead into our code and see if we can figure out what exactly is going on. Um, before we do anything else, I want to do a git pull. Just to make sure I have that latest everything here. Um, oh, need to use this one because of my SSH key. And now we can see here's my GitHub workflows rust.yaml file here. We can now continue to update this. We uh, at this point, we don't need to always use like the web editor for the GitHub actions. This YAML file is, is perfectly fine for us. It also means that if we want to store this away, uh, and using other projects, it'll be really easy. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can find out what's going on with this. Do a cargo test. And we actually have two errors here that we can see. Um, and it's going to be this like assertion failed left doesn't equal to right. Uh, this feels like really weird. I actually kind of know what the problem already is. And it's actually due to that last feature that we were implementing where we can reuse columns in our ECS when we delete. If we come into entities here, uh, when we create an entity, we'll notice that we are updating this self inserting into index. Uh, if we find that there's a zero, but if we don't, because it's, let's say, you know, we're just creating a bunch of new entities uh, without deleting any, we don't set inserting into index, meaning that that's, well, it's a zero because 
a default view size is zero. So we kind of need to update that. So let's do self dot, uh, what is that called? That's inserting into index. Um, and we need to set this to be the very last item in uh, this vector. So do self dot map dot length minus one. So if I just do that and we rerun our tests, everything is passing now. So let's go ahead and commit this up. Uh, so this is um, calculating the correct index to insert into when creating new uh, entities. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do a push. This is a push to the main branch. So we should see this as a new job runs. Let's come back to actions. And here it is right now. It's already starting to run. Let's see if this passes um, our test now. Now it has to rerun all of these, like, you know, re-download everything back from crates.io again. So in larger projects, this steps, uh, th these steps can actually take a very, very long time because Rust is not known for being the fastest compiled language out there, um, which means that especially if you're you're compiling for release mode, uh, these GitHub actions can end up taking a bit of time. Uh, however, as I sort of mentioned before, this should be pretty fast uh, because this is a very small project. Uh, here it is, the tests are already running and it's already passed. So run tests, it, we're good to go. Now, the next thing is we're building for release. So it's gonna do the exact same build that it did and we're good there. Everything is good. We've got a green uh, check mark for this GitHub run. Great. So next up, if, we've, uh, if everything has run correctly, we kind of want to do an auto deploy, don't we? Uh, well, Let's go figure out how we can do a deploy. So let's uh, head back over to our marketplace and we want in actions, probably something like creates.io. And here's this publish creates GitHub action for us. I think we wanna just use this. It gives us some uh, basic uses here. So we're just gonna use this uses. I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy this. We're gonna come back to our code here, go to the Rust YAML, and at the end here, I'm gonna put you in. So use this. I don't have to like do any kind of like pull into my repository. It just knows to go grab this. Uh, okay, then it has this with. With registry token, and then you notice we have this secrets cargo registry token here. So this is what I mean by we're not going to put the token directly in this file because that would expose it for the world to see. And then anybody can publish uh, to my account on crates.io. And I don't want that to happen. I want this to be, you know, secret to me. And then you're going to have your secret to you. So where do I put this? Uh, well, in our uh, project here, I'm going to go to settings and uh, just let me make sure that I don't have anything in there right now. Uh, uh, where is it? Secrets. And as I expected, I have nothing in here. So it's perfectly safe to show. So, well, right now. Settings, secrets, and then here are all the secrets for us. Now, what I want is just the repository secrets. There's no secrets in here. So let's go ahead and do a new repository secret. Uh, we know that the secret is going to be named this. So cargo registry token. And then I can just put anything in here. And then that's going to be what it grabs out to be. Well, I want this to be the actual token. So, well, I've got to hide this again. So I'm going to put that over to the side. I'm also going to go and grab that token. So I'm going to go to creates.io. Um, I've got to log in. Once I've logged in, I've got to go to my account settings and I need, uh, let's see, I've got several tokens already. 
what I can do is just click on new token. I'm gonna name this, um, what is the name of this project? This is gonna be my, this is the BBECS tutorial. So I'm gonna just name this GitHub Actions, BBECS tutorial, create. It gives me a, gives me a token. I'm just gonna copy that. Come back into here, paste you in, add the secret, um, and I can show this again. Now we'll see that I have this cargo registry token here. It doesn't display automatically. So if you are streaming or doing any tutorials yourself, uh, you can mostly safely show this screen, but of course you can ac you, there's still ways to accidentally show it. So be very careful when uh, opening this page in front of anybody else. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and back to here in a Rust YAML. So it's really just gonna like try to publish this. So I'm gonna save you. Now, one big thing here is uh, we can't publish a Create.io package with the same version number. So we're gonna have to bump that. Let's go into cargo.toml. We have 1.0. Let's go ahead and make this just a 1.0.0. So like a fully released version. I'm gonna hit save on you. And then uh, going to come here. We have our two things. We have our, our workflow that's been updated and our cargo top toml. So we are auto publishing to uh, crates.io. Let's go ahead and push this. And now we should be able to in here, come back to actions and watch this run. Now, these do sometimes take a while. I mentioned that before. We should be able to watch this um, for a little bit, but it shouldn't take too long. So what are next steps um, here? Uh, there's all sorts of different things that you can pull in from the marketplace to help out with. Um, probably something to do would be another GitHub workflow and set that up on all pull requests into your main branch. Uh, and that way, if anybody is like, uh, at, you know, doing a pull request to an open source repository, it could run all the tests. You can also set it to run all the Clippy linting. Uh, make sure that everything is a, is exactly the way you want it to be, and then have it. Uh, a, you know, that way it's just like all green. Then you know, hey, things are looking good, and then I can go in. We can also set up maybe some code to like to make sure that the test new tests were written, and then uh, set up GitHub Actions to like reject if there's like you know not enough tests. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, okay, so now, oh, it ran our published crates. Let's go ahead and we'll head back to crates.io. Uh, here is this. I want to go to just updated. Here is BBECS tutorial and 1.0.0. So this has been auto updated uh, from, well, GitHub Actions. And uh, I think that's a great way of like setting up any kind of open source or even private source project. Make sure that there's no way to, to uh, uh, publish just directly from your own computer. I mean, I guess there's no way for you like to truly prevent that. But if you make it so that the, the deployment happens from the GitHub repository push, it runs the tests and then deploys them, then there's gonna be a lot less chances of somebody on the team saying, you know, I'm sure this is going to work in production. I know, you know, I'll just, I'll just run it. Uh, CI CD is a really good thing to happen. Uh, so with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.